Hey guys, um, what I wanted to do was go over uh, the in-class um, homework problems, or I shouldn't say homework, uh, just the in-class problems. Um, for those of you guys that weren't able to make it, um, you'll be able to see what we did, how we did it. Uh, for those of you that were in class, um, hopefully this will serve as a good, um, a good refresher <clears throat> and hopefully should be, hopefully, a little bit more clear. Okay, so I'm going to look at the first one. The first one says, uh, you purchase a March 2017 coffee futures contract uh, on this day at the last price of the day. They want us to use table 23-1. They want to know, um, what will the profit or loss be if coffee prices turn out to be uh, $1 um, 1.47 or I'm sorry 1.4273 dollars per pound at expiration so in order to do that the first thing we need to do is we need to go to table 23-1 uh, and we're gonna look for coffee obviously and So there's coffee right there, okay? So <clears throat> we're gonna buy a March, yeah, we're gonna buy a uh, March 2017 coffee futures. So we gotta figure out which one of these numbers that we use. Well, remember, option, or I'm sorry, column one gives us the time frame. So under coffee, we have March in column one. Column two gives us our open price. Column three gives us the day, uh, the day's high. The third column gives us our low. And the last column, or the, um, the column that's uh, bolded, that is the settlement price. So that is what we want to use. Okay, now, we notice that they're quoting us $145.20. We need to pay attention to how much is per pound. So notice we have coffee. Uh, one contract's 37, uh, 37,500 pounds. And basically it's cents per pound. So we need to change this $145.20 into cents, right? So... I'm going to go back to our uh, PowerPoint here. Where's my draw? Bear with me. Oh, sorry. There we go. Okay. So, um, the initial price... I'm just gonna say initial P. They quoted us it was $145.20, right? But the contracts are based per cent, per cents rather. So the actual price is one point, or the initial price is one dollar four five two zero. Okay, so that is the price per pound, right? Now each contract, which we saw was 37,000, oh, sorry, 37,500 uh, pounds. So we have to figure out what is the initial contract value? So to figure that out, we take our uh, price per pound. So we're going to take one dollar four five two zero uh, per pound.
and we're going to multiply that by the number of pounds we have per contract. So we have 37,500 pounds per contract. So we see that the initial contract value is 54,450. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Then they want to know what is the final contract value. So to figure that out, We do the same thing. We'd say, okay, how many pounds per contract do we have? So I'm going to do it just a little backwards in a sense. I'm going to say 37,500 LB per, per contract. I'm just going to abbreviate, say CON, times the final price. Well, it tells us in the problem that, hey, the price of coffee turns out to be 1.4273 per pound at expiration. Okay, so then the final value is 53,523.75. Okay, so we need to figure out is there a gain or is there a loss? Okay, well, the first thing says we bought, right? We bought this futures. It's kind of important, and here's why. The initial price was 54,450, right? The final price was 53,523.75. There's a difference of 926.25. Uh, and this is actually a loss. Okay? Because remember how the futures contract, um, how the futures contracts work. Right? When we're dealing with the, um, the futures contracts, we have to we're trying to lock in a price, right? We're trying to hedge against any loss that possibly could happen from dealing in, dealing with, um, dealing with commodities, right? In this case, we're dealing with, um, dealing with coffee here. So what we're looking at then, excuse me, um, what we're looking at then, since we're dealing with, um, with futures, is that we're trying to, again, um, hedge against any risk that is associated, right? And in class, we went through the, um, the, risk, uh, the risk profile, right? And basically, remember, these futures, um, they're going to be used by a number of people, right? Primarily importers, exporters, whatnot, um, in order to hedge against... Um, uh, changes in a currency or exchange rate risk. Okay, so that's that's number one. Now let's look at number two. Number two is pretty much, if I remember correctly, yep, pretty much identical, right? So we're going to do the same thing. So for number two, we're looking at milk futures. Right, we're looking at milk futures, and we need a March 2017, and we're gonna um, the price we're gonna pay for it. And remember, we're buying here. The price we're gonna ba uh, pay for it is um, the last day at the last price. So again, we have to use table 23-1. And we have to find uh, milk. Let's see, corn. Oh, 
soybean. No, it's here somewhere. This chart isn't really um, very pleasing to the eyes, is it? There it is, milk. Okay. Now, milk's a liquid. Why they're charging it or why they're quoting it um, a contract in pounds, I have no idea, but we'll go with it. So, where we are um, right here in the milk, and we see that it is 20,000 pounds of milk per contract. And we see that the contract uh, is written cents per pound. So they give us dollars here, right? Because remember, we're going to the fourth column here, these dark uh, bolded numbers. March, we find that the price is $16.97, right? But again, we got to break them, we got to convert that into cents, not dollars. So to figure out what our price is, the initial price. I'm going to just put an I, I'll just put I and I for initial price. It is 0 0.1697 uh, per pound. A contract has 200,000 pounds. Two thousand pounds per contract. So the initial contract value, all we have to do is take our two hundred thousand pounds per contract and multiply them by the um, <clears throat> uh, price per pound, which is 0.1697. Guess what? We end up with an initial contract value of thirty-three thousand. $940. Okay, not too bad. Now we got to figure out what's the final contract value. So I'm just going to say final or thin, right? Thin. Okay, so they, they say that the um, they want us to determine what is the profit or loss if the milk price turns out to be 0.1648. Right, so think about it this way: the price of milk here in our initial contract is sixteen ninety seven. It ends at sixteen forty eight. So, because we're trying to hedge against any any risk of this price per milk going you know going higher, it actually goes down. So since we're buying, we actually incurred a, incurred a loss here. Okay, so let's figure out the amount of that loss. Well, we have the final price. So it's 0.1648 per pound. Well, we know that a contract is, sorry. We know a contract is 2,000 pounds per contract. Our final value then is Thirty-three thousand. I'm sorry, thirty-two thousand nine hundred and sixty. Okay. So now, since we have the price of the beginning contract and the final price of the contract, we can figure out if we have a gain or loss. So right off of, right off the bat, there's a difference of nine hundred and eighty dollars. Okay, but because the initial price is higher than the final price, we have a loss. So we have a loss of $980, okay? Um, <clears throat> number three, pretty much identical to, to what we did in one and two. We're looking at silver. So this one's a little different slightly. We are selling, right? We're selling silver, and we're looking for a futures of March 2017. Um, and again, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to uh, um, sell this contract on the last day at the last price of the day to make it easier. Okay? They want to know what is the profit or loss 
if silver prices turn out to be $17.86 per ounce at expiration. So the, the fin price here, the final price, uh, is $17.86 per ounce. Okay, so to figure out what the beginning contract value is, we need to go to our chart, and and again, this is the same chart we've been using, uh, table 23-1, and we're going to look for silver. So we have silver right here, okay? And silver is, uh, one contract is 5,000 troy ounces, and notice how it's quoted, dollars per troy ounce. So the fact that it's dollars, the quotes that they give us, we don't need to convert into cents, right? We have dollars, or the, they gave us dollars. Um, the contracts are quoted per do based on dollars, so we're good. We don't need to adjust or anything like that. So we need to find the price on March for 17741 so let's make it so. So the initial price is 17 dollars 741 cents per ounce or per troy ounce. I'll just say ounce just to make it easier. We're going to multiply that times the size of the contract. Well, one contract equals 5,000 ounces. And we see that the initial value of this contract is 88705 Then Then we need to figure out what's the final price, right? What's the fin? Well, we already know what the price is, okay? They told us that the, con the final contract was at 17.8. 86 per ounce. Again, one contract is 5,000. So we multiply these out and we should end up with 89,300. Okay. So right off the bat, we have a difference of $595 per contract. Okay, because the problem says we sell seven of these. Uh, we'll get to the seven, the seven contracts in a second. Um, but right now, is this a gain or a loss? Well, if you look at the previous ones we did, we were buying, and when the initial number was higher than the final number, we had a loss. It's because we were buying, right? So the lower number is higher than the, or the ending number is higher than the big number. So based on that, like what we did um, in our last ones, we should have a gain, right? Not really, because in one and two we bought, right? Now we're selling, okay? So think about it this way. You bought a contract that says, hey, in the future, you can buy 5,000 troy ounces at 87,500, okay? Well, at the end of the contract, it's 89,300, okay? So basically, you're selling at the lower price, right? So you're losing, that's why. But at the end uh, of the contract, the dollar amount's higher, but because we're selling, we're not getting this higher number, we're gonna get the lower number. So we have a loss here, okay? So then we need to figure out, okay, well, what is it for total, right? We had seven contracts, we basically bought seven of these. So we take seven times the negative 595, and we end up with a total net loss of 4165. Okay. B says, okay, well, what if the final price was 
1767. Well, if the fin price was 17.67, we still have a loss, right? We definitely have a loss here because the final price is higher than our than our original number, right? So if we plug in our original information, we know that the contract value originally is 88,705. That's the original contract value. In this scenario, we're saying, hey, you know what? This time the contract, the final contract value is 1767 per ounce times 5,000. We end up with um, a final number of 88,350. Okay, so again, there still is a loss here. Um, the difference between these two again is going to be 355 negative times our seven contracts gives us 2485. Remember the seven is number of contracts. Okay. Okay, so now, <clears throat> um, in class we skipped number four because number four is identical to number three. It's identical. You can do that on your own. Um, if you want to check with me with the numbers, I'd be happy to give those to you. Um, but it's identical. It would kind of be overkill to show you another example. What I want to jump to now is the options, right? The call options, the put options. Um, so we talked about those in class, right? And in class, and I want to apologize, that was totally my fault. There was a total breakdown. Um, so I want to go over how do we quote these prices? <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm so sorry. Um, I want to go over how we quote these prices. Um, so we actually need to use... Um, for futures options, we need to use 23-2, right? And that is the table we need. And again, I'm gonna try and make this a little bigger. Hopefully we can see the numbers. Well, it's a little better, not quite. We'll work with them. Okay, so here it says, suppose you purchase May 2017 call option on corn futures with a strike price of $3.90. Assume you purchase the option at the last price of the day. So we need to find, well, first of all, on the left are our calls, on the right are our puts. Right down in the middle is our strike price. So we need to five we need to find the strike price of three dollars and ninety cents. Okay? And we have ten comma five. Alright? So for right now, just remember ten comma five. Okay. So well, let me go back real quick. I just want to point out that we did use that last column. Okay. That was the uh, column that we used to figure out what price we're going to be using. So you go to the strike price and depending on if you're looking for calls or puts, you either go to the left or the right, just one um, one column and you find out what that what that price is. Okay? So here we have 10 comma 5. Let's uh, jot that down. Basically these are quoted in cents. Okay? So think about it this way. We have ten and a half cents, right? But not really. Once we get a past the um, the comma there, it's basically these are basically listed in in eighths. So the price is really 
10 and 5 cents eighths. Okay? So if we convert that, we see that our price is 0 0.10625. So that's how we get that. We just need to recognize that this number over here is 5 eighths of a cent. We just rewrote it and then we converted it. So that's how we got our price for this one. So we have to figure out what's the cost uh, for a bushel of corn, right? Not a problem. Uh, the problem tells us, let's go back actually. Yeah, bushel of corn is 5,000. Um, so what we're going to do is to figure out what the cost is. We're going to take our cost of 0 0.10625. And we're going to multiply that by 5,000 bushels, which ends up giving us a cost of 531 dollars and 25 cents. So in your uh, in-class handout, this is the answer to A, and this is the answer to B, okay? C says, suppose the price of corn is $3.77 per bushel. So let's look at C. So the price per bushel is $3.77 per bushel. Um, again, that's at the expiration of the, the options contract. We have to figure out what's the net profit or what's the net loss. Well, it's pretty easy, right? It's pretty 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 easy for us to do because think about it. What's our strike price? Well, we know our strike price is three dollars and ninety cents per per bushel. Okay. So we have a call here. And in order to figure that out, we need to figure out, okay, what does a call allow us to do, right? We're buying, so we own it, so we call the price, right? We can call it if we want, okay? If we buy a put, that means we, we sell that underlying commodity or whatever at the strike price. So we have a call. If we exercise, we have the right to purchase. We to buy, we'll just say corn because we're talking about corn here. Okay. We have the right to buy corn. Well, the option that I have says I can buy corn at $3.90. Okay. Well, that's great. If the actual price of corn per bushel is higher than $3.90, I'm going to exercise this option and I'm going to buy um, the bushels of corn. They tell us that the market price is $3.77 $3 at expiration. Okay, So we, what we say here is the call is out of the money. right? The strike price is actually higher than the spot price. And when we say spot price, we mean that's what it is right now. That's how much it is right on the spot. Okay, so in that case, this contract expires worthless, right? We're not going to do anything. Uh, we're not going to exercise the contract. So we need to figure out what is our loss. Well, the loss here is our initial investment, the initial investment in the option. Well, we paid $531.25. So that's our loss. That's how much we lost. Guess why? Because we're going to go to the market and buy corn at $3.77 instead of executing our strike price and paying more for it. Okay, So we only lost what we invested in that option. So <clears throat> the first thing to recognize is, okay, what are we doing? Are we buying or are we selling? Okay, And when I say are we buying or are we selling, I mean 
the option. Are we buying an option or are we selling an option? Because if we're buying an option, the buyer dictates who or the buyer dictates the the action, right? And the action I'm talking about is is the option going to be um, exercised? So we are buying a call, right? So we're buying buying the call option. So right now we're in the driver's seat. We control what we do. Okay, that's number one. Number two, we got to figure out, well, what does a call mean? Well, call, since I'm buying it, gives me the right to buy the corn at the strike price. Perfect. Step three, I got to determine, my is it financially better for me to exercise this option and buy, in this case, the, um, the bushel of corn at the strike price? compared to the spot price. So we need to compare what's the price now versus what's that strike price in the contract. If it's if the strike price is higher and we bought a call, we will not exercise, okay? So let's look at part D. D says, again, this isn't, uh, this isn't, um, this is a different example, right? We're still, we're still, we're still working with the fact that we bought corn uh, corn options and we're still dealing with the price of that corn option. But instead of the spot price being $3.77 per bushel, now it is $4.14 per bushel. Okay, so we got to figure out. We bought the call, right? We would say, and I'm going to put $3.90 there. Okay, so again, strike price $3.90, spot price is $4.14. So now we say that the contract expiration price of corn is $4.14 per bushel. The call is actually in the money. So here we're going to say in the money. In the money. Basically, that means that the um, the price per bit, price per bushel, the actual price, the four fourteen, is greater than the three dollars and ninety cents strike price. Okay, so we're going to exercise instead of paying four dollars and fourteen cents per bushel. Now we're going to pay three dollars and ninety cents per bushel because we have this call. Okay, we need to figure out what is our payoff. To figure out the payoff. We take the current price minus the strike price times the number of bushels per contract. Okay, so here's the payoff, and this is how you figure off, figure out payoff. I didn't say net income, or I'm, let me rephrase that. I didn't say profit. I said payoff. There's a difference. Let me show you what that is. So to figure out the payoff, we take the 414 and we subtract out the 390. Again. That is the spot price minus the strike price. And then we multiply that by the number of contracts we have. Um, well, bushels of corn are 5,000 bushels per contract. So we end up with a payoff of $1,200. $1,200 is not my profit. That's my payoff. Okay, that's my payoff. My profit equals my payoff of $1,200 minus the initial price of the contract. Initial P of contract, which was 531.25. So my profit then is 668.75, uh, okay? Um, so um, the last one we did uh, was, um, was number six, okay? And number six um, 
isn't really that hard. Um, we have, suppose a financial manager buys a call for 28000 so we're going to buy a call. Um, call option for 28,000 barrels of oil at $83, okay? Um, at the same time, she's going to sell a put option for the same price, $83, and it's the same uh, same volume, okay? Now, <clears throat> let's pump the brakes here for a minute, and let's think about these definitions. I am buying a call, okay? So if I buy a call, I am the, um, I, I'm in the driver's seat, right? A call, <coughs> <coughs> A call means I have the right to buy 20, uh, 28,000 gallons of oil at $83 per barrel, okay? If I sell a put, okay, let's think about this. I'm selling, so I am not in the driver's seat. The buyer is in the driver's seat. So I'll pick on Courtney Lee. Mean, let's say I'm the financial manager and uh, Courtney Lee is uh, the other end of this transaction, right? Because you got to have two, right? If I'm going to sell a, uh, a put option, somebody has to buy it, right? So we'll say Courtney's going to buy it off me. So that means Courtney's in the driver's seat, okay? Courtney has the right to put um, – Yeah, she has the right to put that uh, barrel of oil to me at $83 and I have to buy it, okay? So here I have the obligation to buy. And that's at $83 as well, all right? So we got three prices, okay? And let's just say that... Um, the, the prices that we have are, uh, 77, 78, 83, 88, and 89. Okay. Um, and it says here that, um, the call options give the manager the right to purchase oil futures contracts at a futures price of 83 per barrel. Uh, the manager will exercise the option if the price rises above 83. Selling the put obligates the manager to buy the oil future contract at the futures price at $83 to barrel. So the put holder is going to exercise if the price is below $83. So we got to figure out what's the payoff. Right? What's the payoff here? So, if the future price of oil ends up being seventy-seven dollars, we got to figure out what's the value of the call, what's the value of the put. Okay. So, if the price hits seventy-seven dollars per barrel, the call option is not going to be exercised. Right? That's stupid. Why? Why would? Why would she have the right to buy at $83 when she can go buy it at $77 at the market, right? However, from the put side of it, the price is $77. Guess what? For the buyer of this sell, or I'm sorry, from the buyer of this put, this is in the money. Because why would the person sell it at the market for $77 when they can exercise the contract and get $83 for it? So here, this financial manager would have a loss of, of, of $6, okay? Same thing with the price of 78, right? She's not going to exercise the call option, right? Why would I buy it at 83 when I can go to the market and buy it at 78? 
the person or Courtney that owns the put, guess what? Courtney's going to be like, hey, I'm not going to sell it at the market for 78. I'm going to exercise this option and she's going to make me buy it at $83 a barrel. So in that case, um, the value of the, the this position would be $5, right? There'd be a loss of $5 to me, okay? And total val value of these contracts would be $6 and $5, so I'd have a loss. If it's $83, neither of us are going to exercise the contract, right? That's the spot market. The price now, $83, is the same price as the strike price. I'm not doing anything, right? We're, we're not going to exercise. We'll just do it at the market. Now, what if the price goes up to $88? Hmm, okay. So I have the right to buy at 83 when the price uh, the price of a gallon of, of, of oil is $88. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and institute my, my call option, and I'm going to buy it at 83 as opposed to 88 So I have a gain here of $5. Put option, it's out of the money, right? Why would they sell it at 83 when it can sell it at 88 And the same thing with the $89 price, uh, futures price, future price of a, a, a barrel of oil. If it's $89, I'm going to institute or I'm going to execute the call and I'm going to have a difference of $6. I'm going to have a $6 gain. The put is going to expire. So we have a $6 or I'm sorry, a $5 gain and a $6 gain. Okay, so if the price at seven, if the price of a barrel of oil in the future hits seventy-seven by the contract date, I'm losing six. If it hits seventy-eight, I'm losing five. Ah, but if the price hits eighty-eight, I'm winning, right? I'm gonna execute and I'm gonna gain five dollars. The price of the barrel hits eighty-nine, I'm gonna execute and I'm gonna have a, a payoff of uh, six dollars okay um, that was the last one I believe we did in class um, problem seven is identical to uh, number five so if you should have any questions you know work on it give it a shot if you have any questions uh, please feel free and text me let me know uh, I'd be more than happy to um, go over that with you all right um, so there you go. Uh, you have the homework that's up in Blackboard. Um, you have these to work on if you'd like. Um, and you're good to go. So if you need anything, please don't hesitate to reach out to me.